Welcome to PartialArc.com. Don't do that. You find yourself in a tavern. Yo, we should have checked for traps. I knew he forgot something. I think I can reason with him. You killed his father. Can I have sex with it? You could certainly try. I'm going to touch the sword. Don't touch the sword. The child is evil, right? Obviously. I could cast fireball. Always cast fireball. All right. Roll for it. Welcome to Friday Night Quests. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Jay Jones. For our new listeners, we bring in special guests to play Dungeons & Dragons, a tabletop role-playing game that takes place mostly in our collective imaginations. Our guest this week is John Harlan Kim from TNT's The Librarians. John was the very first guest we ever had on the show, and he was gracious enough to return to play with us. And we have an excellent season for you, so without further ado, let's get to the game. All right, let's meet our players. First up, we have Jeremy Fox. Jeremy is a writer for film and television, and Jeremy is playing the human fighter, Prince Horace Kemp. Jeremy, tell us a little bit about Horace. Last time we saw him, we saw him at Bahamutmus. What is, now six months have passed at this point between Bahamutmus and now. What are some things that are new going on with Horace? He was touched by Bahamutmus. He was touched. Um, He's been talking to a therapist about that. That's good. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, you know, he uh, he doesn't wear hats as much anymore. He has a man bun. Whoa. He wears a lot more felt That's around good. his armor, felt cape. Uh, Real good for those sash. summer months. Yeah. He, you know, he doesn't sweat. He doesn't have pores. It's weird. <laughs> um, and he has to roll around in, the, in mud. <laughs> That's a magical property of his uh, of one of his items. Yeah. He just doesn't sweat. Um, yeah. And he's actually trying harder now to be more um, noble. Oh, he, he, you know, his mother was, is, is do you mean succeeding more at being noble or? Uh, yeah. I mean, he's trying to redefine what noble means to him. Oh, okay. That's He may fail at it. So hmm. I like it. I like it. All right. Next up we have Kelly Egan. Kelly is a digital connector at Golan for Nintendo and she plays the half elf druid Isabel Buchanan or Izzy Buchanan. Kelly, tell us a little bit about Izzy and what she's been up to since Bahamutmus. Well, since Baha Mutmus, she's been traveling around with Horace. Um, she aged one year. I think we all actually aged one year. So happy birthday, Horace. Yeah, happy mm. birthday. Um, I have a new animal companion Oof. that we've met along the way and who's now kind of a... Actually, I believe this is when we went to a sanctuary. It wasn't quite, well, it was an illegal sanctuary farm. It's basically a rich Ooh. woman. A rich woman that kept all those exotic pets. Mm. And uh, I freed all of them. <laughs> Because that's the what legal I do. way, illegal, yeah, illegally, illegally well, free illegal. the illegally held pets. So exactly. So they're free, but right, one, two negatives make a positive. Yeah, that's so, how math works. And right? one of them uh, kind of wouldn't stop following us, and it was a tiny little Wolverine. It's because you're holding it. That's why. <laughs> it's because I love it. It, it just keeps you. trying to get away. <laughs> no, no, I know yeah. you want to stay <laughs> forever. <laughs> this thing keeps following me around. <laughs> and the Wolverine's name? Gloria. Oh, Gloria the Wolverine. So Gloria's our little, my little. Uh, familiar i also we did a little shopping before uh, that's this, right some I, of your equipment has mm-hmm, changed i have i've changed my outfit i've sold some items i've gained an ion stone of storing which will be further called as the iss okay it is a stone that helps me store three spells above my head literally yeah like, they literally just float above you this stone hovers above my head and your head is like a like glow. the sun and they're just like planets yeah, orbiting you it's a purple Yes. It's purple. And, and it's we lost a classic uh, weapon that we haven't seen in a little while because you sold it. We did. In order to get the stone, I kind of had to raise some extra dough. Uh, so I sold the Snowmatar. That's right. <laughs> and that's gone. It may reappear in another adventure <laughs> in the hands of an enemy. <laughs> you guys might just, yeah. The final enemy will, will rule the Dead. world with the Snowmatar. You fools, you sold it. <laughs> you did not unlock its true power. Yeah, if you want to buy the Snowmatar, you just head on down to Tinny's, uh, Teddy's Tin Shop. Teddy's Tin Shop Titties is tin shop. right in there. Kingdom of uh, Tinson? Yeah, what, what look? That's right. You guys became sponsors mm-hmm. for uh, yeah. for Teddy to get a discount on that new Ion Stone you got. Yeah, from Tinville. Yeah. Look. And so now you will unfortunately have to hawk that name everywhere. Anvil Lane. <laughs> maker, maker of fine goods and um, questionable materials. Teddy's Tin Shop. Very nice. All All right. uh, parentheses, no hamburgers sold there. No hamburgers. Oh, no hamburgers. Yeah. No. Very important for anybody who mistakes that shop for a hamburger shop. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> False advertising. And now joining us as a returning special guest, the first guest from our very first episode, 
He's best known for his role as Ezekiel Jones on TNT's The Librarians, which was just renewed for a third season. Woo, Congrats, woo, woo. John Harlan Kim. John, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I'm uh, excited to be here. I think it's nearly been a year since I was last here, so... Yeah, yeah. Like, in, in real time, in real time. Yeah. I guess in the game, it would have been about three years? Yes. Like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Close to three to four years. And yeah. John, you're playing the halfling barbarian pirate, Ander Silverfin. What has Ander been up to? Uh, he's been a lot uh, in the three years. He was um, living off... Uh, the fame acquired from his heroics the last time we saw him. Oh, yeah. Um, he decapitated a demon. He did. So, I mean, uh, yeah. It, it <laughs> That's was, worth a few drinks at the bar, I think. Pretty incredible. Um, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the only people that really heard was a uh, small Inuit village um, out in the uh, Mediterranean. And. Uh, um, <laughs> And, uh, or the equivalent, fantasy equivalent. Fantasy. Of that, right. Yeah, the yeah, fantasy yeah. equivalent of it the It spells with a Z. <laughs> yeah. Um, Put it wherever you want. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he's, he's been doing well. I think uh, he's, he's, he's trying to channel his anger. He attempted to get all these swear words out of his body. It didn't really work out that well. Uh, Did he realize that words don't function like it, blood and sweat? Yeah, and it's not a limited not resource, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, no, he's... Um, He's doing all right. I think he's, um, yeah, just drinking as, as uh, a lot of uh, halflings do. And, um, yeah, just um, enjoying life, taking it as it is. He had a drinking problem last we met him. I think he, he did, did yeah. No. Pro- problem's such a specific word. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's his reality, really. I yeah. believe you guys left him drunk, passed out on grass. Yeah. I think is where we last saw him. <laughs> I think is where he was. Uh, we're the best. Yeah. Awesome. All right, everybody. Let's dive into the story. So... Our story begins where we last left our Velvet League. Prince Horus and Izzy and Sweeney celebrated the holiday of Bahamutmus with Horus's family and foiled a dastardly plot to gain control of the sovereignty. In the wake of this victory, Sweeney was delivered a letter, a letter that revealed him to be a target of a mysterious group, identified only by a symbol noted on the bottom of the letter. A symbol seen only once before, barely legible on the inside of a thousand-year-old tome kept in a library meant for gods and immortal beings. On top of that, this group knew Sweeney's true name, and feeling compromised, Sweeney chose to leave. No words, no goodbyes, just gone. Sure, the proper searches were made. Prince Horace even sent his trusted manservant Gormo to look for him, but upon his return, he seemed to only bring the news of Sweeney's passing, and that there was no sign of their former companion. And now, six months later... Sun shines down through the elaborate canopy as the onlookers watch as the royal bears play in their natural habitat. Brown fur with streaks of teal, a sight wholly unique to this sanctuary. A few of the onlookers have pushed their way to the very front of the observing deck, one being an excited half-drowl Izzy Buchanan, shortly followed by the handsome and well-dressed human Prince Horace Kemp. To the right of Izzy and Horace stands a dwarf guide who is trying his best to keep the tour on time and on track. And so the king, in one of his great moments of delusion, mistakenly dubbed his pet bear a prince and true heir to his throne upon death. Obviously, this didn't carry much favor with his actual sons and heirs. Unfortunately for them, it was very difficult to challenge and defeat a bear in single combat, as would be the only way to usurp him. So he was crowned sovereign, and as a result, we now stand on what remains of the kingdom of Rendor, a once proud and flourishing sovereignty. Uh, please take your uh, drawings and sketches, and we'll be moving on shortly. Uh, Horus uh, raises his hand. Uh, yes, uh, you, sir? There's no nobles at all? Uh, well, actually, the, uh, the bears down there are, in fact, uh, royalty, unfortunately, uh, for this kingdom, due to them actually being the now only remaining royal family of Rendor. Do they drink rosé? I, you know what? It's something we actually haven't offered uh, because they are, in fact, bears. Um, so, no. I guess the answer would be no. Uh, Any cool. other questions? Of course. I think these bears are... Par- it's okay for bears to be royal. You do know that animals own the planet. You promised me there'd be nobles. They are. They're noble bears. See how this ties to both of our interests? I love animals. You love nobility. These are basically two things we both love in the same form. Do you know how long it's been since I've looked into a rich person's eyes? <laughs> oh, what? What? I have more money than you. By exactly, so Izzy goes into her satchel, uh, 450 gold pieces. Which is not a small satchel, I guess. No. <laughs> just, just like I had to do a spell just to make it look tiny. How dare you throw numbers at me? You know how I don't understand that. <laughs> I am a noble, a prince. What are you, Izzy? 
and uh, just a simple old country girl from the forest yeah. who loves bears. Look at them. Look at the teal streaks through their fluff. Quiet. I've I was trying to give you a compliment. I was going to say, you're my friend. Oh, shit. Well, friends don't talk about money with each other. It's uncouth. That is true. So, let's get out of here. I'm not interested in looking yeah. at bears. Ooh, let's see if they have a gift shop. Maybe we can get tiny little crowns. I know you like crowns. Okay, I could be interested All right. in that. All right, so you guys round the corner to go to the gift shop. And uh, as you do, you actually see a familiar face. Leaning on one of the wooden railings, enjoying the fine pint of dragon ale, a halfling dressed in attire fitting the most charming and clever of pirates, their friend... An old companion, Ander Silverfin. Harry, Inky, <laughs> how are we? Oh my god, it's three sheets to the wind, Ander! Woo! Hey, it's Woo! you! <laughs> oh my god. Who is, who is he? Remember we, uh, a long, long time ago, oh. Pirate pi- helped us out a lot. Uh, ha- yeah. ha- the oh, only halfling I think we've yeah. met. <laughs> if you could fill me in too, because I'm sort of missing details. I just... Well, we look very different. I mean, I grew boobs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Round of oh my applause. God, I didn't yeah. even notice. Yeah. No, you did. No, you did have a hot list, and then you ignored me. Oh, yeah. for all players, that's a fifth level. Yeah. Um, so fifth level <laughs> boob action. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled really well to get the, these right now. Yeah. Oh, um, fancy running into you guys here. Yeah. Um, how have, how's it? How's it look, you're looking well. You look like you've been to some, you know, gnome CrossFit classes. Looking quite Thank slim you. these <laughs> days, Horace. Thank you. Yes, I do have. Uh, no masseuse, actually. <laughs> Funny story. Uh, 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 Anders? Silverfin? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, last I checked. Yeah, Anders Silverfin. It's good to see you. You look a lot better. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I tried these uh, speech therapy classes where I um, tried to remove any cursing from my body, um, and I feel like we're about 98% of the way there, so... Now, do you mean, like, the F word? Uh, F, the Z, the X, oh. all three, yep. <laughs> Z is my a first lot word. of deep speech, Curtis <laughs> words. Z is a horrible racist yes. epithet, uh, and I won't even say it. No. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> well, good for you. You're getting back on your feet. Your color is good. You're, yeah. you look, you're standing. This yep. is all good. These are all good things. I'm feeling great. We should... We. I feel like I know you too well enough to in- invite you out for a drink of some sort. Uh, in fact, the... Um, the Druid Yelp reviews of uh, a local tavern by Ooh. the name of The Unbearable Lightness <gasps> of Being uh, just happens to be right around the corner if you guys wanted to, you know. I don't get it. Why would they call it that? Oh, yeah. Bear-themed liquor. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. This day just keeps getting better okay. and better. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it, it had about five five-star reviews and seven one-star reviews but that's irrelevant on, uh, on wizard yelp yeah uh, yes yes wizard yelp that's mm, the yeah uh, s- excuse me I'm, I'm already uh half tanked as some would say <laughs> so uh if you wouldn't mind i mean if you got time i'd love to catch up we we should we should we should hang out i'd be honored to let's, have a drink with you henders absolutely let's, let's do it let's do it so you guys head into the uh the pub the unbearable lightness of being hey welcome in everybody we're gonna bear you over with our savings uh <laughs> Anyone Mall like a table, <laughs> table uh, for for four, three cubs, three cubs right in the corner here. Oh, look at the, the bear shaped tables. I know, and look, 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 they have little bear mugs that are like paws, but they have handles on it. This place is the best. Uh, do you guys know what you want for your order, or? Uh, you know, uh, I like this bear teeny here. I think I'll have a bear teeny. Uh, sure. It's it's actually it's just just so you know it's a regular martini, but we uh we put hair in it. If that's all right. Oh, my God. I'll have two of them. All right. Perfect. Uh, what will I like? Um, I'll have a Grizz Gimlet. Uh, yeah. Grizz Gimlet. Popular one. Very nice. Do you guys put hair in that one as well? Oh, uh, we can. We, we <laughs> I mean, unf- I'm going to be honest. Hair gets into a lot of these drinks <laughs> without us even meaning to do it. Yep. Yeah. A lot of fur in this bar. Uh, I will get the grizzly beer, as per usual, and if you could just sprinkle some of that hair yeah. on the outside. Oh, definitely, there. definitely, definitely. Oh, around I'll be, the, I'll around be right the back. Yeah, you like it around on, the, on the lid. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll be sure to do that. I'll be right back. <laughs> so he walks away to bring you guys your hair-filled beverages. <laughs> wow, it's a lot more hair than liquid. I... Yeah. It's all hair, actually. <laughs> yeah. It's mostly hair. <laughs> so uh, eventually he comes back. He brings you your drinks. Um, you guys are enjoying it, I guess. Um, roll for it. No. Um, so as you're there having your beverages, I would like Izzy um, and Horace to roll perception for me. I got a, I got a four. Four. You're you got your you're, you're just loving that hair in your mouth. So you're just really all into your beverage. I got a nineteen. So nineteen, Izzy, you notice out of the corner of your eye 
actually for a few minutes now, a figure in a hood has been kind of standing off to the corner and kind of keeping an eye on the two of you and watching you. Guys, uh, there's like some cloaked figure in the corner keeping an eye on us. At now... I don't know. Izzy, there's a cloaked figure in I, every bar. I know. But he's giving me those like vibes that are like, you know, not like friendly. He's just, I don't know. Izzy, can I ask you this? I When's the last time you saw a cloaked figure in a tavern that didn't give you weirdo vibes? That wasn't you? Hmm. That wasn't me. <laughs> Funny joke. <laughs> Got him. I, okay. I, I don't know. Just This seems like such a, like the Disneyland of bears. I don't know why somebody would be creepy in the corner. And does that, that man us. creep you out? I'm going to allow him to speak on this matter. So Ander gives over and gives a look to the figure in the robe. And the figure in the robe at this time walks up to all of you and pulls back the hood and says, Hey, guys. Long time no see. Oh, it's oh, it's you. Uh, <clears throat> what's this? <clears throat> that son of a bitch. Uh, oh, it's Sweeney, you, son of a bitch. Sweeney, by this point, looks a little different. He has very short hair shaved into a blue mohawk. Uh, he has red mutton chops, uh, he's carrying a staff, and he has fingerless gloves. Other than that, it's, uh, it's your old pal Sweeney. You don't remember Sweeney? Oh, it's Sweeney! Ah, see, told you they'd remember I you. I think it I is. didn't think they wouldn't. Now I'm alarmed that uh, Horace maybe it's, didn't. <laughs> it's you been, look different. I, I do, yeah. I, and also, let's maybe not use my real name here, just uh, call me, um... Zeke. Let's use Zeke while we're here. You'd rather Zeke than Sweeney. Yes, yes, please, Zeke. Sweeney is a great name. That lasted about as long as I thought it would. (laughs) Rolling perception for the bar people. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) We'll we'll see. Keep that to myself. Hey, Barman, isn't Sweeney a wonderful name that rings off the tongue? Uh, yeah. What was the name again? It was Sweeney. Sweeney, you said? It's got a nice ring to it, doesn't oh, okay. it? Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess so. There you go. Zeke is just, you know, it sounds a lot like that racial epithet that we don't say. <laughs> Look, it's unfortunate, but it is my name here, so that's just a name that it doesn't matter. Is he going to, like, stand up, and I'm, she's going to slap him? What do I have to meet? Uh, roll ro- uh, yeah, let's roll the hit for it. Why not? Uh, What'd you get? Uh, 18. His AC is a 13, yeah, so you hit. That 100% hits. <laughs> and I, this is an improvised weapon, so if you want to do some damage, you can roll a D4. It'll be my dominant hand, my left hand. It's a... Uh, it's <laughs> roll a D12. Uh, <laughs> it's a strength modifier plus one. Yeah, so roll a D4. Plus your proficiency bonus, because you are proficient with your... It's not, it's not a D4. We did this last time. There's no damage for physical attacks. Oh, there isn't? <laughs> it's just your strength modifier mm. plus your... Uh, Five. Well, she's rolling anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's her dominant hand, I'll Sweeney. I'll take it. I'll take the hit. So you take five damage. Ah! Whoa! That's a real palpable hit. You I mean, could almost kill a regular bastard. human being. We thought you were dead for months. I cried over your not dead body, and here you are in the happiest bear place on the planet in a bar. My favorite place. I thought you were crying because you were growing boobs. Oh, no! Oh God! No, Horace! No! Oh my gosh! That reevaluates a lot of what I was feeling and thinking. Where were you? Uh, sorry, I, Sweeney. I had some uh, some errands to run. Errands? Yeah. My mom runs errands, Sweeney. You were gone for a long time. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. They were important. Had had to get done. Sorry about that. Sorry I didn't say goodbye or anything. I don't want to be a negative Nelly, Sweeney. But okay, you can't then just, don't. Well, well, then I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Zeke, don't you think it's maybe time we filled in our friends here? Uh, seems like now's the time, yeah. Um, I'm here to hire you guys for a job. Yay! Woo! Yay! Money. I'm going to look over at Izzy with a strange look like, we don't get hired. Oh, Horace, do we work? We hire. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, that's not we true. Hire. When we met Ander, we were hired by that demon. He gave us money. Oh, but Zig, time has passed. See, Horace and I have been... Having a lot of great adventures, a lot of professional loafing, I would qualify it as. I call it, I call it um, a royal uh, yeah. solitude uh, mar- with a person. Maraudering with intent. Maraudering with, with intent. intent. That's okay. General Dickery. You know, we've been doing a lot of fun stuff. General Dickery was one of the uh, uh, military men in my family's army. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, maybe if they had more of an idea. Yeah, let's let's a little, little, little context. Um, have you guys ever heard of um, Seafarer's Folly? The yeah. ocean. I don't know if I have. Actually, Should we you guys can roll a history yeah. check yeah. for Seafarer's Folly. Yeah. I got a 13. 13? Izzy? 
11. Okay. So, Horace, with a 13, you know, since you've been around uh, the Rendor Sanctuary where you guys are, Mm -hmm. nearby there is a port and a very popular spot for people to come to in and out of that port. People have been talking about and you have heard of Seafarer's Folly, but it's... You, all you know about it is that it is an island close to the Rendor Kingdom, which is now just the Rendor Sanctuary. But that's all you really know about it. Is all that it I know is that island. it's a nearby island. A nearby island. Okay. I'll, I'll say to Sweeney, I know that it's a nearby island. Yeah, it's, a, it's, an, it's an island that people go to and that there's treasure. There's supposed to be treasure there. So, so I'm going to hire you to take me there and we'll go find some treasure. That's, that's, that's the job. Yeah. Can I do a deception check on it? Uh, insight? Insight. Yeah. Into your deception. Yeah. Which means we're going to have to have Sweeney <laughs> oh, roll this right. deception. That's true. So, Sweeney, what's your deception roll? 18. 18? Oh, 12. Okay. So, you you believe him? I believe you. Treasure, eh? Yeah. I do like treasure. Izzy, you seem pretty upset about Sweeney being back. She just left with no, no warning. Just abandoned us. That's, just, that's something you would do, not him, except... We don't know his name. Well, if we're background. talking about abandoning here, oh, I mean, uh, I think oh. I'm the world's leading authority <laughs> on abandonment, and my issues date well past mm. before my encounter with you three. So, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and say nobody's perfect. Forgive him. Yeah, yeah. Guys, come on. Nobody's perfect. To For- err is human. Forgiveness is a royal attribute. That's a thing. That's a thing that is important because of royalty. It can also be a v- royal insult, apparently, as well. <laughs> in oh, that's oh, yeah, yeah. Forgive, forgive, <laughs> forgive yourself. Uh, you, yeah. That could be. Go forgive yourself. Go forgive yourself. Yeah. That's right. That's a insult. draconic insult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For other nobles. That's canon. Right. <laughs> well, I love the allure of treasure. Something deep down inside of me, and it's not the bear juice, is telling me that maybe he's luring into <laughs> us, into, uh, like, He's hiring us to maybe fix one of his problems. Maybe he needs us for us. Maybe he can't do it on his own. I'm going to assume Sweeney needs us. Mm -hmm. He rarely ever Mm -hmm. was. Let's get him to admit it. Do you need us to help clean up one of your messes, Sweeney? No, we're not cleaning up a mess. We are going to go find something on an island. It's cool. I'll, I'll pay you guys a little bit of money, 30 gold each, 30 gold each expenses and all that jazz just to, you know, help get me, get us, us, three, four of us to the island to look for some treasure. What's up? It's like the old days, guys, old days looking for treasure. That's a thing that we've done probably, right? Looking for treasure. I'm going to let Izzy decide on this. Thank oh, you, Horace. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Cool. You know, I'll do it on one condition. <clears throat> that we all drink until we speak backwards. And then we can leave because this is a bear themed bar and I've never been in a bear themed bar and I want to drink everything on the menu. I've, I've been in different kinds of bear themed bars. A ooh, insight. Adding to the notes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, roll some insight on that <laughs> statement. Insight. Well, Wait, we, is that true? Is that got- true? Or are you going to have to roll a deception? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's a true fact bars. about Sweeney. <laughs> so you don't need to roll insight then. Yeah. Um, it's a franchise. Yeah, let's sure. get <laughs> the unbearable line of being. Let's get lit and go look for treasure. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Adventure. <laughs> all right, so I guess you guys all drink a lot. Um, so you wake up the next morning. I'd actually like each of you to roll a constitution check for me. Oh, Just straight no. constitution. Is, is, this a, is, this a, is this a check yeah. or is this a saving throw? This is a saving throw. Constitution okay. saving throw. <laughs> Horace gets a 12. So Horace has a 12. Izzy, what'd you get? 20. 20. Jeez. I'm a champion. Sweeney? 18. 18, and Ander? 14. 14. Okay, so you guys all come up. Uh, Ander, Horace, you're a little groggy, mm-hmm. but you guys are, you're not bad. You, you guys are a little, little below a 10. A little bit too much but, hair But uh, mm-hmm. Izzy, you, 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 you feel great. I feel great. And, uh, and Sweeney, you feel pretty good, too. This is my resting state. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say Horace and Andrew, you guys are picking like some bare hair out of your mouth here and there, but otherwise you guys feel pretty decent this morning. So it's sunny. You guys make your way towards the port. There you see uh, Andrew's boat. So it's a it's not a massive, massive pirate ship, but it's a boat that can be easily navigated by one or two or three people. Um, Andrew, do you have a name for your boat or an idea of what your boat would look like? Anything specific on it? Oh, absolutely. Uh Welcome to my boat, the Green Pearl. Uh, oh. You have your own boat. No relation That's to the Black so Pearl. It is the Black Pearl, essentially just more a little environmentally friendly. We like to take care of these fishes. <laughs> Did you steal here. the Black Pearl and rename it? Uh, you know what? Um, I'm going to... No. 
No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, is Ander running like the Tesla version in like D and D? Sustainable ship. Ain't Sustainable ship. It's got a Mister Fusion on the back. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't look like much, but I guarantee it's much more roomier on the deck. Um, and uh, yeah, I have it all preparations ready to go for our magnificent adventure to. Where are we going again? Seafarer's Folly, That's my friend. Seafarer's Folly. Seafarer's Folly. All right. Anders, are you going to be uh, driving the boat while drinking like you're doing now? Oh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't drive. Well, you're drinking right now, though. Well, I, I drive when I drink, but, uh, you know. Oh. You know. Oh, you don't drive. Do you have a crew? Uh, no. no. Do we? We couldn't afford a crew. What? True. <laughs> that's true. We're the crew, guys. That's the... Uh, oh, we're the crew. That's the yeah. uh, 30 gold is for the crew oh. of the boat. That's Ander, wow. I'm going to be very honest. I have never been on a ship before. That's not true. <laughs> what? No, we've never you, been on the ocean. You we, were on a we, boat. Whoa. <laughs> well, <laughs> you were on two boats, actually. Oh, a, boat in a boat in a swamp and then also... Oh, that's a But that's like but a on the ocean, boat. But then also you were on a boat to uh, the Horus Estates. And You're on the Kemp Estates. I've seen you turn into a dolphin. <laughs> no, I can't turn into a dolphin. That was another girl. Oh, I'm, oh yeah. my God. Oof. Who Hang were on, you traveling with at that time? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a dream. But I made out with a dolphin. We're still in a... <laughs> oh, no. But Let's unpack ship. that whole statement. This has sails and like two masts. I've never been on a ship, ship, ship. We're yeah. going to go where we can't see the her- like land. Like full on, full ocean. That's so, true. You guys have mostly taken mostly rides taken along little, coasts. Like ferries and boats. That's true. Like, but this is a Big ship. rivers. But That's this would actually be out on the ocean. That's There's, true. It's a lot harder to get to shore if something... That's true. Uh, God. You know, Izzy, can you turn into anything at I can fly. I can, no, oh, okay. no, I can't, but oh, I can okay. fly. Anders? Uh, I can't turn into anything, but um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, take uh, my own advice here, uh, which is point and shoot. So let's just aim at the island right. and let's just go for it because that's that's how I get to most destinations. Yeah, is that like a sailing axiom? Is it yeah, just point yeah, and shoot? yeah. I think that's day oh. one of uh, sailing class, which oh. I never attended. Oh, like, that's okay. <laughs> I like this. I was at yeah. the Bear Tavern, unfortunately. Yeah. Getting uh, fur caught down my throat, so uh, explaining right. that cough from Welcome earlier. To my life. Seems simple enough. Let's yeah. go. All right, so you guys are loading up the the final provisions for the ship. Um, as you do that, um, you see a small fishing boat pulls in right next to your boat, and the bow actually taps the hull of your ship. There's a loud wooden crack. Just as the noise reaches your ears, you see a massive orange-looking man leap off the fishing boat and with one arm pull the boat to dock and tie it off. Whoa, 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 whoa. So sorry about that. A bit of a miscalculation, but looking at your frame, she's still a firm beaut, I'd say. I think your ship is in just fine order. And you're certainly going to need it if you're fixing to take on the folly. So my apologies, uh, but we'll just be tying off here and uh, moving on our way. What, what's he mean by take yeah. on the folly? Yeah. Also, um, no, I'm seeing some scratch on the paint of this, this green sustainable No, ship. I don't think so. That, uh, that paint was definitely let's there. Let's exchange insurance and let the insurance company decide. How about that? Mm-hmm. Let me see your papers. Come on. Um, all right. Um, I yes. don't have any Let's papers. focus on the insurance. That's the most important yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Let's roll for in some insurance. Uh. <laughs> Uh, and then Horace will investigate. Look, I'm just nope, uh, nope, not, not gonna, just don't a normal. Don't worry about that part. Just a normal fisherman. Just uh, just putting in my time. But uh, you guys have a nice trip to the the folly, and uh, good luck to all of you. I see that you've got the um, well, the right provisions. Let's when he says that, you see his eyes kind of go through all of you and rest a little bit longer on Izzy, Ooh. and then and look at the rest of you. Ugh. I'll have you know, sir. She can turn into a dolphin. And so you should. Uh, oh wow! Keep your turn to a dolphin. Can't, All right. I've never seen that. a dolphin. I've never seen oh. a dolphin. Oh, I keep she forgetting. She can't do that. I've seen them in books. Well, good luck with that, I guess. But um, yeah, I'll what? be seeing all of you later. Good luck, though. Uh, seems like it'll be quite a quite a trip. <laughs> um, so yeah. So he goes and starts pulling uh, provisions off his boat, unloading his fishing boat, and you guys just hop aboard. Yep. Yep. That's what should we do? Come hop on the uh, boat. Was he it just me, or was he checking me out? Mm. He... Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. that's Might. the most important takeaway. Yeah. I think so. Let's focus on that. All right, good. I'm glad we're all on the same page with what's important. Yeah. You know what? Those Z words can't drive. <laughs> <for shit. laughs> you know, I'm not trying to be racist, but not trying to be. I uh, <laughs> just I, are. I, I'm. I'm gonna go. Get ready to get head off. Yeah, right, me too. Yeah. Let's let's yeah. uh, let's oh, boat. Okay. <laughs> okay, time to boat ship. So you guys board up on the ship. 
Um, and yeah, I guess you guys set sail. So what I'd like you to do, and I think Anderson, since this is your boat, I'd like you to roll a survival check. Okay. So that's going to make sure that you got a good idea direction of where you're heading. Now you, I'm going to give you, uh, you'll be able to take advantage on this because this is your boat. Okay. So you've, you've sailed it before. So, so you, you get to roll two times. Yeah. And, and take, take the, the best one. Oh, awesome. 14 was higher. All right. Plus three for survival. Oh, 17? Oh, yeah. yeah. So good. that's good enough. So you have a good direction on Seafarer's Folly. Woo! You're heading there, and you guys are probably about, I'd say, a, a, about a day out from the ride. So you have one night on the boat. Do you guys do anything of note or do any preparations before you get to I'm the gonna, island? I'm going to pull Sweeney aside to the back of the boat. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say, Sweeney. Yo. Is what you did to us, is that what friends do to each other? Uh, No. I wasn't being sarcastic. I truly don't know how no, friends work. That's why it was actually important to me that you know the true answer to that, um, so that you know for future reference. That's not a thing that friends do, no. Okay. So are you not our friend? That's that's a loaded question right now. Okay. I, just, I need to figure out some things that may affect the answer to that question. Okay. But, like... Is it sexuality related? Yeah, sure. Yes, let's go. I no, that. it's not. It's, it's. Have I told you I'm attracted to dragons? You haven't not oh, told me that. Okay. You've well, never not said that. It can be taboo, you know. So if you need to come to, I never got and that impression about... from you. I never got the impression that you understood that. Well, <laughs> I do understand simple-minded people judging me. Sure. And, you know, if so, if you feel that people would judge you, you can always talk to me about it. No. And if you needed to go away for six months and think about some of that stuff, that's okay. No, it wasn't the the sexuality thing. I'm I'm good on, but it's other things that I need to work on that are like. Oh, you fucked something. <sighs> you had a weird takeaway from this conversation that I'm not comfortable mm, with. I get it. We've all fucked something we regretted. The last time you saw me, I was with your family. What do you think the end result of your line of questioning is? You know, lamps can be fuckable. <laughs> okay, I see. I see what's happening. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> And, you know, Z-words are known to do that. Okay, that's hurtful. I've <laughs> known right. Z-words. All right. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll revisit this conversation because uh, I think it's an important one. I kind of hope we don't. Okay. Well, <laughs> I have a special book if you'd like to look at it. I, oh, the questions I have that I don't want to know the answers to. Great. Cool. Sweet. Yells Izzy from the other side of the boat. I'm going to be pulling ropes. Go ahead and talk to her. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Just ask Ander first. Please ask Ander first. Ropes. <laughs> Please ask Ander first. That's what he told me to do. Please. No, he was more specific oh, he's, than that. He's coiling the rope into like one of those little rope piles you see on ships. Actually, I'm using reason. my knife to cut one of the ropes and pull <laughs> no. on it. Please stop doing what you're doing. Please stop. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. You're doing great, Horace. Doing great. Oh, thank you. All right. This whole... Uh, okay, cool. See, I walk over to uh, to Izzy on the other side. Have you seen my Wolverine? Have you... Up? Look at... She gestures down near her ankles at a fuzzy, large toothy animal i thought that was a purse no this is gloria hey gloria you gotta did you replace me with a wolverine no no she just follows us around or me around yeah she's my she's my new familiar oh that's nice that's cool yes yes cool she casts fireball (laughs) (laughs) she can't do anything magical i mean i mean yet i mean i think she can i haven't really talked to her much can't you talk to animals i can but i just would prefer the relationship right now to stay where as it is oh wow keep keep the mystery huh interesting all i know is her name is gloria did she tell you you assigned that yes she's a very well she's very kind of simple knows her name sure. she likes uh certain foods but uh-huh. you know she's exploring the world much like we are she's lived her entire life in a cage poor thing pets pets this may be the only animal you've regarded in the way that- this is how normal people associate with animals yes that's what pets are yes she's a pet okay for now this we'll is- see what she evolves into pets, that's pets. not how pets work <laughs> they just stay but pets but that's how druids work okay cool good good talk also, I'm still mad at you. I figured. Runs away. <laughs> Just runs off to another part of the ship. Picks the floor and runs away. Okay. So you guys uh, go to sleep. Um, where's everybody sleeping at night, by the way? Are there, how big is the ship? Are there cabins? I would say there's probably one central cabin, which would probably be and- where Ander might sleep, depending. I don't know. No, no, no. I think Ander sleeps on the steering wheel, just sort of. <laughs> uh, nice. Do you That's tie what I picture, to too. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. tie yourself to it? Yeah. Well, there is a cabin uh, in the boat. There's one central cabin, but otherwise, it's it's a pretty lean ship. It's not meant to oh, like, hold Horace, a crew of like 20 people. Horace claimed the, the captain. Yeah, cabin. I figured. Sure. Yeah. 
I'm in a, I'm in my hammock. In your which hammock. Is actually, the best way to sleep on a ship. That is true. I was going to sleep in the crow's nest. Actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So the morning comes. No, nothing happened in the night. Because um, we did not keep watch. <laughs> No, no assassins on this boat tonight. Um, as the sky is clear, <laughs> we don't die. The island, as you can see, off the just just out of view, especially you, Sweeney, from the crow's nest, it starts to come into view. Now, the closer you get, you realize that this island is more of a monster than a tropical paradise. Lined on all sides, from what you can tell, are jagged rocks and roaring seas, and it doesn't seem to be any specific landing point that you could really take. As you round a little bit more around the island, from its most northern point, a single port looks to be coming into view. Hard to tell, but it looks to stretch out from between the rocks, maybe the only entry point on the island from what you can tell. What do you guys do? Anders, this coffee is cold. Uh, What what the hell is that? Uh, That is uh, my squid special. It's very- uh, I meant the island. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, that island. Sweeney, any Land idea? And ho! Sorry about that. A little, little late to the party on that one. My bad. Um, we need to be sailing now. We need to sail very aggressively because of all the rocks and things. Seafarers folly, am I right, guys? All right, let's do it. How do you sail aggressively? I don't know. Do you, uh, so you I'm, I'm growling. So, yeah. Ander, uh, where where do you want to be taking them? Do you want to, just, do you want to aim at the rocks or do you want to aim at, aim at what looks like the port? Let's aim straight for the port. All guns gotcha. blazing. Let's just go full steam ahead. All right. Ready, fire. What What was it? What was the term? Uh, go, 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 gadget, go. Gotcha. <laughs> Is that what they taught in the sailors? Sailors. Yeah. sailors. Yeah. Man, that old-timey dialogue sounds so stilted these yeah. days. Yeah, it's so I'm strange. A, I might be paraphrasing here. Horace <laughs> right, uh, is going to pull some Ken never finished sailing school. Uh, never so went. A- aiming, for the, aiming for the port. So as you get closer, the winds actually pick up. Almost out of nowhere. The sails catch every inch of its force and you begin to move faster and faster. Too fast. And as the Too port... Too furious. <laughs> <laughs> Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift. Nice. Yeah. And as the port... Die com- harder. <laughs> <laughs> and as the port comes into view, you see them. Uh-oh. Dozens, hundreds of crashed ships. Each hull smashed and crushed into the other, forming one long port and you know at the speed you're going you might just be added to that similar Anders, line of ships. Are those your boats i'd like you all oh, to no. roll for initiative oh dear we're gonna totally survive just gonna Let survive get... all over this island and i'm gonna roll for life's initiative which i critted on <laughs> Because life, life is so hard. Um, <laughs> so, just trying to slow life down a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Ooh, life's real fast, guys. You might miss it. Uh, Horace, what's your initiative? Uh, I got a 14. 14. Izzy? I got a 14 as well. Oh. Ooh. Who's got the higher initiative? Plus five. Uh, age before beauty, you go. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sweeney? I, I told us never talk about that. Uh, 16. 16. And Ander? 21. Oh, wow. Thank God barbarians have advantage on initiative. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and okay. a sailor. Originally a six. So how is this going to work? Because <laughs> it was a six at first. Mm. Oh, geez. Ooh. Advantage is nice. <laughs> so how this is going to work is I'm going to give you guys a certain number of undetermined turns. I will give you an idea when you get close enough where you're potentially going to crash. But just so you guys have the stakes. And maybe, Anders, since you're going first, you're a sailor. You know about speeds and how fast a boat is going. Um, I'd like you to roll two die for me because you have advantage on survivability um, so that I can tell you what you might know about this scenario. Uh, eight and 12. So with your survivability added in as well? Survival. I think 15. Uh, plus three, so, fi- so, 15. so 15 on your yeah. highest. So you know with a 15, you know that you are going far too fast to to get to this dock. Like if you guys hit it at this speed, it is very likely that you will all die. Not fall unconscious, but you will hit it far too fast and hard that you guys could just go right under here. So you know you need to figure out a way to slow this boat down. So you guys will have a certain number of turns to figure out however you guys want to and can think of creatively to slow this boat down. I will also allow you guys to roll skill checks, whether that be perception or survivability, to get an idea of what might be on this boat that can help you slow it down or what you could do. So, Ander, you're first up. So what would you like to do to kind of cut your speed to, before you guys hit that port? Uh, I have an idea, everyone. Um, grab the ropes, time around, 
the hull of the ship and I'll jump off the back hanging on to the end of it. I've put on some weight since the last time you have seen me. <laughs> I think I'll be able to slow this baby down a little. By dropping yourself as an anchor? Is he abandoning us? <laughs> yep, I think he is. <laughs> So oh, how, halfling. So how fast are we going again? <laughs> I mean, how many knots? It, it's not really a determined speed. Jay, your DM also doesn't know too much about knots, so okay. all of them. Let's just say a lot of knots. <laughs> well, like okay. miles per hour. Like, uh, okay. Are we let's at say. Or? Let's say. You're, I mean, boats can't go 100 miles per hour, but it feels <laughs> like it. It feels like you guys are just. The wind is unusually strong. Like the sails are at a full peak. Like they're just rapidly pulling you towards this port. I'm, uh, can I can I use a strength check to like yeah. grab a rope and pull it as hard as I can to uh, like keep the sails under control? I think we should drop the sails. Oh yeah, because they're catching the wind. That's the problem. Oh. We need to take, to take the wind out of the sails. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, Anders first. So, Ander, what do you want to do? Would you still like to take your anchor approach, um, or would you like to roll a survivability check to see if have, there are other ideas that you might have known about? Do we have a regular anchor? You you do. The boat has an anchor. It's oh. a small one, but it's oh. an anchor. It's a small boat, so it's a small anchor. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm going to listen to conventional wisdom here and take that regular <laughs> anchor. <laughs> All right. So I'd like you to do just a, a straight strength check for me. So you shall have a, a strength number on your sheet and just add that to whatever roll you have in the D20 to pick up this heavy, just massive anchor and drop it off the side. Uh, six. Si oh, six total? Yeah. You uh, hurt your back a little bit trying to lift it, and you cannot get that anchor over the edge of the boat. So up next is Sweeney. I'm going to try to uh, take the sails. Take All right. down the sails. So how are you going to take down the sails? Uh, I'm at the crow's nest. You're in the crow's nest, nest so can you're I, above them. Can I jump onto a rope mm -hmm. and pull it down to have the sails fold up? So you're going to need to cut said, because remember, these are tied on to a post. So you need to get to the bottom to cut said rope, or you can just try to cut the sails. That's what I was wondering. Um, you know, you could slide, you could jump toward the sail with a knife, cutting all the way down the sail. I think I sold my knife. I just have my staff. I have a staff now, guys. Oh. Not to cast magic, but just to, like a walking stick. I have stick. a staff now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. How about this? How about you, from up top, grab a grab something and jump down, and I'll grab a rope and I'll fly upwards. That does not help us. So That's that just I a cool thing. You can but do. it'll look really cool. <laughs> yeah, but oh, so I, see. I can cut the... To get you to the top. Yeah, so I can cut it. All right, let's see if we can do that. Okay. Should we both... That'll be that'll be a... So you go right after him, so I'll just let you okay. roll right after. Okay. But Sweeney, that'll be... Because what are you trying to do? You're trying to grab the rope to Grab the rope and, and slide down so he will slide up. Okay, so, you're, so basically this would be an acrobatics check, yeah. All right. That's nine. Okay. I'm, I'm going to need I, you to roll a dexterity save to see if you just fall off. That is uh, 14. 14. Okay, so you hold. You almost slip, but you like are dangling, basically. You come down awkwardly, so Horace, I'm going to need you to roll a pretty good acrobatics to like keep yourself straight up, because he went off at a weird angle. Uh, acrobatics is my best thing, Ooh. and so I got a 25. Oh, yeah. So how does that look? Because it looks as amazing as you want it to look. I, one hand wraps around a rope, and then I adjust my cape. Uh, and wrap that around one another hand and put one put both my legs against the rope mm -hmm. so I look regal as I'm flying upwards <laughs> into the sky. Wow. Yeah. Like almost like Batman. And there's a, like Batman. There's a lot of wind, so that cape is just yeah, fluttering. It looks real yeah, cool. It, okay. I look beautiful. I look like a hot wet mess yeah. on the way down. <laughs> yeah. All right, Izzy, what do you do? I uh I marvel at how beautiful we're gonna be like that. God damn. Always, Marvel. always, always <laughs> Okay, I'm going to, um, there is, so we're on a ship. Mm -hmm. Technically, ships have now, boats Now, on at them, any right? time you guys feel like you don't have an idea, you can roll a survivability check, and I can tell you what you can or might see around you to know what you can do. Ships have boats on them, unless if it... If ships they, have boats if on they, them? No, yeah. if they didn't, like they wouldn't be, yeah, they have lifeboats? No, they wouldn't be called ships, because only a ship can carry a boat. Boats do not have... I don't know if that's common. Knowledge. Yes! No, that is! That's why it's called a ship. Well, ships normally have boats on them. Your survival role might depend on whether Andrew still has his lifeboats. Can, should I check for that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Doesn't look good. No. Ooh. Ten? Andrew, what did you use your lifeboat for that is no longer on this boat? <clears throat> um, oh, no. We, uh, drunkenly one evening... <laughs> Yep. yep. Um, Good start. Say no more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to hear the story. Uh, kidnapped. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. Um, many uh, little imps. 
And uh, unfortunately, the I got this idea, guys. Guys, <laughs> I know we're a bunch of imps are. What's up, man? And unfortunately, the imp patrol caught us out in mid sea, and we needed patrol. to evacuate all the imps. So we chucked them on this boat and kicked them off, and uh, and uh, they've sailed away, and we've never seen the boat since. <laughs> Awesome villain to come back <laughs> later on. An oh, imp no. army. Um, okay, so no lifeboat, no boats, just the ship you're on. Roll of perception, I can tell you what you see around on the deck. Okay. That's good. That's better. Uh, 20. There's, 20. A, there's a glass case that says break glass in <laughs> case of slow severe boat winds. to zero. Um, no, so you see Ander trying to lift this heavy anchor to drop over the side. You see Horace up at the top with the sails. You see Sweeney's drop down. You also see along the sides of the boat, you see a few long oars. So on the left side and the right side, so sometimes when boats drop their sails, they use oars to kind of pull their way in for smaller boats. With this boat is at a size where those oars can matter. So you do see that around as well, as long as, a, as well as a few barrels and a bunch of other additional ropes in case you need them. That's what we need. Okay, I start, uh, I'm gonna start kicking the barrels off. Wait, no, we want more, wait. No, we're gonna, we're gonna turn the boat and then we're gonna jump. And we're gonna need something to cling to when we're floating because we're not stopping this ship. We're that gonna, is a one-way trip. I had my turn. We're gonna drop all the sails and then we're gonna drop the anchor and an anchor is at the 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 front of the boat, right? Mm. So when you drop that anchor going at speed, it's going to hit and it's going to turn the, the entire back. boat. That's what the Titanic tried to do. <laughs> the, yeah. Why are we modeling ourselves after that? <laughs> no, we need to turn the ship because the No, 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 the, the Titanica, the famous <laughs> D&D vessel yeah. that sailed all around the world for many, they many years. They did it in Pirates of the Caribbean too. They, they were going too fast. What did they do? They turned. They dropped the sails and mm -hmm. they turned the boat because when you start... First, we need to turn the whatever steering wheel. Again, this is all in your head, right? Yeah. Is Go right, Izzy. Yeah. What are you this doing? Is my plan. What, so, is what my is plan. your action to do? I guess the anchor is, off, which is weird, is on deck. Yeah, not it is on the side. <laughs> Anner, <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be hanging. Those imps were moving off things around. The side. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go up to the bridge and I'm going to tie the steering wheel to the right and then okay. lock it. The rudder is now constantly on the on the right. So the ship Snap. is now... There goes the rudder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to happen. So are you going to do it hard? Like yeah. just pull hard? Okay. Oh, wait, no, we should know. First, we need all of the sails down. Wait, don't let the D DM's voice sway your Yeah, no, don't let my voice we need, sway We need all the sails <laughs> down. Do well, whatever you want, Izzy. <laughs> we just have pull that rudder hard to the right. <laughs> Honestly, the half of me wants to be like, I'm just going to jump and turn into a beaver and swim away. But like all my friends are going to die. So I'm doing the <laughs> right Quite thing Quite the conundrum. Here. Also, my uh, Gloria would die. She cannot, True. she cannot swim. Oh, Wolverines can't oh. swim? No. No. Was it, wasn't your plan for us to jump off, though? Once we kind of slow the boat down, we can't jump off I the boat right I, now. I, do you think? Do, right now. Your, your turn, do your fast, thing. fast, right? Yeah. Well, clearly none of you all want to live, so maybe I should Again, she's imagining that. all of you saying this back to her because she's just in her own mind right yeah. now. She's having in-brain arguments with herself. Yeah. She's in her oh. mind palace. I'm going to blow the ship up. <laughs> That'll do it. Yes! The That'll best response I've ever heard. blow the ship up. If we blow the ship up, there's nothing to move. <laughs> that, <laughs> and that logic you know, and, does track. And then we to get do expelled that exact... away and have plenty of debris to cling to. You know, in Horace's mind, I have this deep <laughs> fear that <laughs> that Izzy is thinking of blowing the ship up. Sweetie wants to explain so much about how explosions Hor work to Horace you. Horace is at the top of the crow's nest about to work with the sails and just like, wait a second. <laughs> Do you think I should tell her not to blow the ship up? I mean, there might be a chance that she would. Nah, she's not going to do that. That's irrational. If we all go to the back of the ship and just focus on blowing the front up. You're counting on a lot to go our way in a, in a ratio that does not usually track. <laughs> you know, and is usually up for a crazy idea like this. But even his face <laughs> yeah. is a little glum right well, now. Right. <laughs> do your thing. It's Izzy's well, turn. What do you want to do? Remember, guys, you can get creative. You can do whatever you want with your magic or stuff. If you can explain our to me how it would slow this boat down. Our producers are giving Izzy the biggest thumbs up right now. <laughs> blow up the Explode, the boat. <laughs> Explode the boat. Explode the boat. <laughs> okay. Oh. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to explode the boat. I'm going to slowly sink the boat. Mm. This is getting better. Would anyone like to make a nature check about the type of waters that you're it's in? It's only one person's turn. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can't go like, uh, Izzy, I just had this thought about if you possibly were going to blow up the boat. <laughs> can't metagame. Can't, can't insight check from the top of a crow's nest. I guess Sweeney was a stabilizing influence. Yeah. 
I'm going to um, start tying Gloria to a barrel. <laughs> That's a good choice. Yeah. That's, That's a, a good, good warning safe sign. Choice. <laughs> All right, so you tie Gloria, I'm to, tie Gloria, to, tie a Gloria to a barrel. Because I feel like we're going to end up in the water in some fashion. Okay. And she can't swim. So that I think that's an, that would be an action, getting some rope, yeah. tying around, mm-hmm. tying there. Yep. Okay, so now life's turn. Um, <laughs> for, life's, for life's turn, um, you're picking up even faster. So you are getting quicker. You're, you guys are getting there more quickly. You're about a third of the way to the port. And you can start to clearly see all the different boats smashed, mangled against one another, some of them dipping well below the, the shoreline. And you can see where you're heading towards are a bunch of giant masts have been folded down towards you, so it's almost like you're aiming right at like the mouth of spikes that are the head of this port. Yeah. So, Ander, what do you do? You're still working with that anchor. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna forget the anchor. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that because yeah, we're we're moving very quickly and I need to take some initiative here. So, um, I grab one of these oars. Okay. And I'm gonna start pulling it as far back as I possibly can. In the opposite direction. In the opposite direction with all my strength on one side of the boat. Taking the turning idea as I'm obviously only on one side of the boat and I'm going to try and steer us clear of these spikes. Uh, we'll see how I do that. All right, so roll. I'd like you to just roll me a strength check. So you slam the oar into the water. Uh, so it's 18 plus 4, so 22. 22, nice. So you manage to get it in and you get a pretty decent rotation on it. Um, you feel it start to cr- like bend and crack, but you do feel like you've sl- you've slowed down a bit. So you feel like that ore, you have a couple more ores on board. You do feel like that ore did crack, so it's not going to be very usable for the second time around. Yep. But you've slowed your approach a bit. Okay. So good job. Cool. Sweeney, it's your turn. I'd like to do a nature check on this wind. I want to see if this is natural or if this is somehow unnatural or weird. That would be more of an arcana. Oh, yeah, nature check. We'll let you know if it is not natural. Yeah, let's do um, 17. 17. So, strangely enough, this is, in its own way, you can tell that this is natural wind. It's a disturbance in nature. It's an anomaly. It's an anomaly. So, it's not magical. It just feels like this, you know, whenever nature put this whole area together, it was like, well, I kind of hate anyone that comes near this. So, here we go. Yeah. I'm going to just work on those sails. Now, I have... Firebolt mm-hmm. as a cantrip. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping I can just shoot that through the sails and rip them so that they'll just that theory is rip sound. open. All right, I got to make a spell attack on the on the sails. On yeah, the sails. Hopefully, I don't burn the ship down. But I guess I'm not the only person on the ship with that idea. Oh, so there's water all around us. Yeah, let's see what happens. Oh, oh wait, no, I have a plus eight, so that is a eleven. Yeah, you hit the sail. Okay, cool. The giant sail. I mean, if I, you know, it could have just been too windy and I could have bucked or whatever. Yeah. So it is seven fire damage to the sail. Okay. So that's enough to, I mean, you you blow a hole through the sail because it is it is fully inflated at this point. So yeah. like a balloon, it almost pops and explodes. Fire starts to catch along it. But you feel of one of the sails that you've hit, um, you feel the boat start to slow a bit. Not enough, but you do feel like you've taken down some of its momentum by dropping nice. that sail. All right, Horace, it's your turn. I'm gonna jump towards one of the sails with a dagger out, or a hand, I have a hand axe. I'll just use my hand axe to drag it all the way down. From the? From the, the yeah. Okay. Jump towards the sail, dragging it Fly all. Fly as All right, so yeah. I, I'll i let you do like in athletics or acrobatics okay. to jump at it. Oh, I got a one. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> so you, you. We, oh, no, I'm gonna use, can I use my ring? That's attacks. That's if something attacks you. So as you jump, I would say your boot catches a rope that was on where you were standing. So you just fall and drop down to the to the bottom floor below. Actually, you know what? I'll let you roll a dexterity check to see if you can grab uh, something on the way down. But you will. Uh, I got a really good one. I got a twenty-four. Okay, so you do manage to one-handed grab a pole on the way down to slow yourself. All right, but you are gonna take. I would say you're gonna take about four damage. Okay, just for like you know you're you're catching it right on your shoulder. Your shoulder joint's gonna take a bit of strain there because you're hurting yourself a bit. All right, Izzy, it's your turn. Uh, I'm gonna run to the anchor and then I'm gonna lift it and toss it overboard. All right, straight up strength. Fifteen. Oh, yeah, that's enough to, to lift it up, and you drop it over the side. So you feel it drop in the water, and it starts to drag, but it hasn't hit ground yet. You're still a little bit too high in the water, but uh, you do, you have dropped it off. It hasn't slowed yet, but hopefully as you get closer to land, it'll hit ground and drag. That's all I can do, right? Yep, that's it. 
So now it is life's turn. <laughs> um, so life is going to roll. Okay, yeah. So uh, you do hit a wave, a crest, so it bumps the boat up as you get closer. So I'd like all of you to make a dexterity check for me. Uh, check or saving throw? Uh, just saving throw. 24. 24. Uh, Sweeney? Nine. Horace? A 16. Ander? 11. Okay, so everybody seems to hold themselves except for Sweeney. Yeah. Uh, kind of bucks and falls to the ground. So you've kind of dropped prone here. Okay. All right. So you guys are really close to that port now. It is coming up rapidly fast. You might have one more turn, maybe two, to slow yourselves before hitting. So, Ander, it's your turn. Is So the sails are gone? Are they There are two with? sails left. Sweeney took out one, and there are two more up there still going. And they're being held up by... Uh... Ropes and normal... I mean, the ropes and a, and a full sail. So, like, the rope would be pulled down from below the sail and tied to the actual post. Yeah. So you can basically cut or rip or pull off the, the rope to, to drop the sail above. I'm actually going, uh, both the sails attached to the same post? No, two separate posts. Okay, I'm going to attack the f- more frontal post Okay. Um, in an attempt to knock it down. All right. Yeah. Wait, knock the whole post down? I am attempting to knock down a, an, enti- an entire post with my oh. weapon. Yeah. All right. Yeah. With, wait, which weapon? Uh, with my war hammer. Oh, God. Actually, okay. No, let's do the hand axe, actually. No, okay. if you're attacking the whole post... Yeah. I don't want to do the Warhammer. All right, let's do the Warhammer. Okay. If, you're attacking, yeah. if you're attacking just a rope, which is a much easier thing to attack, I'd go with the hand axe. Oh, yeah. It's up to you. It's up uh, to you. We're going to Warhammer the post because go big or go home. Wow. Okay. Cool. I'm going to have to quickly just check real quick the strength of something like this. We are making brave and heroic decisions. You guys are. All right. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So roll, to, roll with your Warhammer to hit that post. He is a barbarian. He gets two attacks per turn. So, just Unless you're raging and he gets three. Ooh. Mm, uh, maybe worth spending one of your four? I'm going to rage. Get real mad about I'm destroying get, your own boat? <laughs> I'm going to start raging because I'm mad that this boat has been annoying me <laughs> for the last however long it has passed, and, and now it's, it's time to end this. I'm, I'm, I'm really pissed off. All right. Show. And life is acting like a real asshole. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's up with that bump? What happened there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. So that's 15 plus 7. Yeah, I mean that that's gonna hit the mo- the non moving post. <laughs> okay. And then roll two more times. That is eighteen plus seven. You hit again. And the third one? That is sixteen plus seven. Nice. Those all hit. So roll for your damage for each of those three. Six? Plus yeah, seven. And plus your modifier, which four. is plus seven, right? No, it's plus four for the oh. plus four. So ten Even for the raging? first one. Even when he's raging? I'm sorry, plus two, you're right. So it's... it's 12. 12. 12. So 12 damage for the first swing, roll again. Perfect. Uh, Eight plus six, so uh, 14. Jeez. Yep, roll a third time. Uh, Five plus six, so 11. Wow. Okay, well, (laughs) the threshold I set was 30, and you crushed it. So you hit it once, twice, and third swing just cracked the entire bow. (laughs) So you crack the mast. It drops off to the left side of the ship and rolls back. No one's back there, luckily, because Horace is dangling from one of the other masts that are still standing. Thank God. He's at the front with the anchor. uh, Sweeney's on the ground, so it might have actually hit him in the face, but he's luckily he's prone because of hitting that wave boat. Um, So that rolls off the back and hits the water hard so that actually took a significant amount of the the speed off of it so there's really only one mast um with its sail still in full going so quick, um quick question dm yeah. i just want to ask a reality question Th- those things are like ropes are all threaded through yeah there's a lot of there's ropes. a lot of ropes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what's happening to me because i'm sure some of the ropes around me are flinging uh, Around you know what? Me. That's a good point. So as that mass rolls off, it's dragging rope. So you see rope like flipping and ripping yeah. off of sides of the boat okay. itself. Some of it's spindling up to one of the masts okay. you're on. Okay. I'd like you to roll. I'm not going to roll for it to hit you. Uh, I would actually like you to roll a dexterity check to okay. see if you can jump away from it before it hits okay. you. Uh, not great. Eight. So you're going to get thwacked with one of those oh, ropes. Okay. It's going to, you know, basically hit your mm-hmm. leg and pull you off the mast. Oh, oh. So we're going to, oh no. Um, I, this is as cinematic as I could possibly so imagine. So <laughs> you're hitting the deck, so you're going to take, it's going to be the average of that. So you're going to take eight points of damage. Okay. 
when you hit the decks, you're not too high. This is not a massive boat, okay. but it is dragging you with the mass that's now oh. coming off. So you need to pull your sword out. Luckily, okay. Sweeney's next. So Sweeney, you're on the ground prone, but you see Horace has just been dragged off. The mast is flying off the back with a rope tangled around Horace about to drag him off into the ocean. So what do you do? I'd like to cast Magic Missile, and what I'd like to do, tell me if you think this is reasonable, Magic Missile always hits. What I'd like to do is cast one of those at the rope that's holding onto him, because mm-hmm. he's being dragged by a rope. Okay. I'd like to sever that rope with one missile, and then send the other two into the uh, remaining mast. Uh, the ropes are fairly thick, so if you roll decent enough uh, with one missile, I would say you can. That's what I'm wondering. I'm, You're going to need five points of damage to break the rope. I'd roll all three at the rope. I think so, just to, just to spare you. Hopefully. Keep in mind, I'm in armor. Now, doesn't so each of your magic more. missiles get a modifier from yeah, your spell? Yeah, each one gets plus one, but they're only D4s. Oh, okay, so okay. So it's not a lot of damage. Quick question, DM. Um, if I go overboard, uh, I'm sinking because I'm in armor. You're but dead forever. No. Can, <laughs> I, can I hold a barrel? Will that hold me up? Wait, you mean if when you I go won. over? Yeah. yeah, if you grab a barrel as you go, yeah. it... Uh, no, no, because you're being not, pulled by a giant mast. No, no, I mean, if I'm not, not, not on not your turn, pulled. just cut the rope. Yeah, not being pulled by a mast, but just being because I'm in armor. Yeah, if I land in the water, can I grab it? Yeah, you barrel? can grab a barrel and you'll okay. be fine. But yeah, the armor would normally you would yeah. well, you'd be roll, you could swim, but you'd be rolling with disadvantage okay, to get back. Here's, up. here's what I'm hoping I'm hoping we've slowed the boat enough that we maybe got another turn. Okay. But I'm going to send one missile into the sail okay. and then two into your rope to at least weaken it so on your turn it's easier for you okay. to cut. Okay. So this one is going to be for the mast, or for the sail rather, two points of damage. Oh, into the sail. Just to kind of get a hole in it. It's yeah, I would say you pop it. Because okay. here's the thing, like it is it is at its full, like there's just wind just about to break it itself because so it's, it's at its full birth. It's going to rip, yeah. Just a little, it's like a balloon, just a little bit of damage. And two damage in D&D is like an, is like a knife is like yeah. something small mm-hmm. because people can have like health of five or like yeah. nine yeah. so yeah mm-hmm. you you pop it okay cool and then i'm going to send the other two into the rope that uh is dragging horus into the deep blue sea uh okay. now i get two fours great there you <laughs> go you <laughs> so break the rope the mast goes off the side and horus is on the ground Oof. prone Oof. alive not off the side of the boat Oof. so horus it's your turn um okay um i'm gonna stand up run to the anchor and throw it overboard. The anchor is already overboard. I already did that. Oh, okay. Um, then I'm going to jump down in the water and grab it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I'm going to motion to um, Anders to throw me the warhammer. Okay. Because I'm going to try to hit the other mast. Well, well the actually, all the sails are down. So one mast all is just sails. gone. Turn the okay. rudder. Uh, Sweeney burned one of the sails, oh, okay. and his magic missile just no popped the third sails. one. So no more sails. The sails are down. Okay. The anchor's down. There are some other... You can try to turn the boat with the rudder, or you can try to grab one of the oars that are on the I side. Will, I will try to turn the boat. So you get up from the ground. You you run up to the... And just roll a stre- just a straight okay. strength check to try to just pull hard. And since I'm a uh, fighter, I have a, an ability called Remarkable Athlete. Oh. So I'm special. <laughs> Okay, let's see. So you yell as you turn it? Yeah, I got a 30. (laughs) Whoa. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I mean... I don't think you can drift with a boat, but <laughs> you can Tokyo drift. You can, with a you boat. can, you get as close. You pull it so hard. I would argue it's easier. And so to drift quickly. With a boat. Yeah, I guess so, sort of. I think boats do often drift. Um, uh, so you could he turn it so hard that well, his shirt rips off? And oh yeah, and his muscles just, just, whoa, just engine that's, grease that's on him absolutely. for no reason. Yeah, yeah. for no reason. And then I take a drink oh of Pepsi and look at the camera. So <laughs> normally, normally, if you had done this before with all the sails up you guys would have broken that rudder hard Mm -hmm. at full speed Mm. but uh actually you do feel the rudder shake like Mm. you feel the whole boat shake i'd like you all to make a deck save right now is he what'd you get it looks like yours was good a five okay (laughs) so is he falls prone again Ah. uh well not again but this time first time first time sweeney 10 uh so you're fine you you get a little bit of balance there ander uh 18 so you're you're good. You're fine. You've been on the ocean quite a bit. Fifteen. And Horace is also good. Yeah. So the boat does almost do a, a, a forty-five degree kind of turn as you do, and as you spin it. What about the barrel with a Wolverine? Attached it's next to, to it? me. It's it's next She's to Izzy. She's just rolling around deck. Yeah. She's, yeah. Wow. Wait, is yeah. the Wolverine tied to the outside yes. of the barrel? So the barrel is crushing the Wolverine <laughs> yes. as it rolls around on deck. It's not a full uh, barrel. Uh, How many? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. As it's just rolling over it, making More noises. Like, how many hit points do Wolverines have? Quite a lot. <laughs> okay. Actually, 50 hit points. Quite a lot. Uh, uh, 13. 
yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a taking an occasional she's one fine. hit point of damage she's here and there. Okay. She's also mostly like it's on her back and her like claws are digged into the, the deck. Like it's cartoonish damage. Yeah. It doesn't count. Yeah. Um <laughs> so so the boat does a spin and just as it spins, you f- you suddenly see the front of the boat go down and the back of the boat go up because the anchor has hit ground. Oh, it's working. Um so the front of the boat goes up out of the water. I'd like all of you guys to make yeah. another deck save, but a disadvantage. Oh, oh, disadvantage. Oh, well, that was a natural 20. And a 19! Oh, good rolls that time. Do I roll again? 14. Yeah. Take yeah. the lowest. Oh, no. Oh. <sighs> Not good. You so can what'd swim, you roll, right? Ander? Uh, you can swim, right? A five. Wait, a Sweeney, what'd you roll? What was the first one, though? A one. Oh. So, a disadvantage. You so got you the lower. T- so you, oh, a one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you get a one. Uh, Sweeney, <laughs> what did you roll? Uh, 22. Uh, Izzy? Uh, Lois was a 14. Horus? Lois was a 10. So you three, Horus, Izzy, and Sweeney, hold onto a rope, and are much like a cartoonish like seesaw action. You fly off the front <laughs> of the boat. But luckily, you don't hit the, the port. I'd like you to roll a, a deck save for me. Just one more. Just a single. No disadvantage. 17. Uh, 17. Plus... So you fly yep. up and you actually, instead of going completely off, you manage to grab hold of the crow's nest because ah. the boat is almost completely flipped up. Like, a, like I guess that would be 180 perpendicular, I guess. Is that what 90, I'm trying 90 to say? 90 degree. 90 it's degree. a 90 degree up. So as you're about to fly forward into the port, which is right in front of where you guys are now with the jagged spikes and poles, you manage to grab hold of the crow's nest. Oh. Um, but you will take about two damage from the, you know, you're going full speed. You're going to hurt your shoulder a little yep. bit there. Cool. But uh, yeah, the boat... Flies up, back into the water, and you guys roll up a little bit in the front of the hole, taps and hits the port, but you guys have stopped and successfully stopped the boat in time. You just have no sails and missing one mast, but you're alive. Not a problem. What did I tell you? Point and shoot. Congrats, guys. You're out of initiative. (laughs) All right. So you've made it. Oh, and uh, Anders is up in the crow's nest now. Yeah, you're now up in the crow's nest. (laughs) We flipped. (laughs) Send help. Oh my god. Is this what sailing is like? (laughs) This is awful. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode. We'll be back again next Friday with part two of our adventure with John. You can follow John on Twitter at John Harlan Kim. You can also follow the rest of the Velvet League at their Twitter handles, Jeremy Fox at J. Lee Fox, Kelly Egan at Girl Meets Bear, and Mike Christensen at Super Geek Mike. And if you'd like to hear our original adventure with John, check out our very first four episodes. All of them can be found on iTunes or by following the link to our website in the show notes. Photos and character art can be found in the show notes on partialart.com. And while you're there, why not check out some of our other podcasts, including Because Comics, where Mike Christensen and I talk about the weird and wacky stories of comic books. If you have any questions about the show, you can email us at FridayNightQuests at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr, all under the handle PartialArc. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the battlefield. Yeah, I'm going to lose the body. So, how much experience do we get? Well, now we have a skeleton army, so that's pretty neat.